Get off to this week. So uh, a couple weeks ago, Guacamole exclamation point came out on the PSN and for PC and Vita, I think, right? Because there's pretty sure there's this is one of those crossplay deals where you can play it on the PS3 and then upload your save to the cloud and then download it on the Vita and then play it on the Vita and then switch back and forth, which is interesting because we were just talking about how you can't move your saves from one place to another on a PS3 with, like, say, a USB device. So, screw you, Sony. Um, but I, I played it, actually, the first time I encountered Guacamelee was at, um, Inicade last year, uh, where it was a finalist. I don't think it actually won an award, but, um, our game of closed world was also a finalist. So when it came down to sh the 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 Indicade show in the Culver City Fire Department in the fire hall, um, my little dog and pony show where we had the laptop set up to watch a closed world. If I looked off to my right, I could see the Guacamole um, TV running. What I'm assuming was a demo because the game wasn't done yet. Uh, but it looked really fascinating, and I got to stare at it for a really long time, so when I found out that it finally came out, I was like, hey, maybe I should buy that game. Um, yeah, it was made by Drinkbox Studios, who also did Mutant Blob Attack. Has anyone heard of that? Yeah, me neither. So, but, um, they are a Toronto-based uh, small dev studio. So, but also, <coughs> it kind of bless you, sir. Thank you. Um, but the game in combination, uh, kind of draws on these two, I wouldn't necessarily say it's about Mexican mythology, but it kind of draws on Dia de los Muertos, which is, um, not just Mexico, but Central and South America, uh, kind of a cultural celebration thing that happens in October. I should have wikipedia would that before we started this. I'm on it! Um... <laughs> But it's kind of like, it's a it's a day-long celebration of um, honoring the dead, right? So you make skeleton-shaped cookies and crackers, and people put marigolds on and stuff like that. Um, so Guacamole kind of draws on Dia de los Muertos for a lot of its thematic material, but it also draws on um, Lucha Libre, which you might guess because it is a Metroidvania, unquote, brawler, where you play a luchador who beats skeletons to death with pro wrestling moves. Sounds pretty great, right? When? November 1 and November 2, 1st 2013. And this year, which means it's probably normally in October. Possibly. Yep. Because this is, this is the year where we had like a crazy late Easter and stuff like that, right? Um, so, but before we get into this, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how games represent, especially things like Dia, Dia de los Muertos and... Um, and Lucha Libre, and also uh, games from Mexico, which was really challenging. Clara, Clara Fernandez Barra uh, gave me some links to a couple, and then there was the only one I could really find any information on was um, uh, Lucha Libre Heroes of the Ring, which I think was called <sighs> AAA, I don't know, the Wikipedia entry is for it up there. Wikipedia entry for which these Utah two can't Libro, see, but Heroes you'll be able to see. But it, what was Heroes it called in del Spanish del slash in Mexico? It's like AAA Los something. It's not Heroes del Ring. No, it's just Lucha Libre AAA Heroes of the Ring. Right, uh, Heroes del, del Ring. I don't see any alternative. Names. In that first paragraph, there wasn't really. Uh, I might be missing it. I'm, I'm suddenly not seeing any... And it's like, and it's bolded in that name. first line, AAA the something. El Video Juego. Yeah, it was just <laughs> the video AAA game. the video game, which <laughs> they mean the uh, Lucha Libre kind of uh, equivalent of the WWE. Oh, okay, I see. Although, that. if you think of AAA game space, that suddenly oh, becomes the oh, best like pun ever. Right. The film, the game. Yeah, it's literally AAA game, the game. Um... But it was uh, it was kind of a it was an entry in the in the pro wrestling game um, market that kind of the WWE games have kind of got the lock on. Mm -hmm. I wondered if we had a copy, but we don't. The, the, uh, the, the, we have WWF like SmackDown. I think we have somewhere. Maybe 
Yeah. We also wondered if we had Fire Pro Wrestling, but um, they quote a Metacritic uh, score that's kind of meh. Not that I care about Metacritic, but apparently the rest of the world does. <laughs> so I wanted to bring that up. But it was kind of it was it was notable. Like it got a lot of attention because it was one of the only like Mexican produced video games that actually made it outside of Mexico, localized for like an English speaking audience. Um, although obviously Central and South America, lots of com countries have their own kind of burgeoning video game industry that they all produce locally. Which okay, one of those tabs is the list of of games from top five games from Mexico that Clara sent me. Oh. No, nope, not that one. Probably the one on the right. Oh, nope. That one. <laughs> yes, this one. So, uh, this top screenshot is from uh, AAA to Game. Uh -huh. looks, and then we have looks, looks <laughs> Save the Turtles, which I think is like a mobile game. Oh, that's I know, it's adorable, that's right? Like uh, I really like this third one because it's called Mariachi... Hero, but it's spelled G I R O. And it's supposed to be a pun on Guitar Hero. Um, <laughs> if you have played or know anything about this game, please let me know because that's awesome. <laughs> not only is it not only is it a is a reflection of, but it's also a pun. Um, then we have Cell Factor Psychokinetic Wars. Oh, that one never actually. Um, that was a big. Um uh, Fizz X demo. If I yeah, it was, it's an Android shooter, right? Uh, it might be Android now. It wasn't Android when it first came out. It was all PC. Oh, Xbox Live and PlayStation yeah. Network. We should check PlayStation Network before we start. Um, and then the last one, uh, which made me cringe a little bit, was Taco Master. Um, but yeah, it's apparently it's... it's, it's it kind of looks like this, um... Again, I don't speak Spanish, so I don't actually know what any of these things say, other than me kind of, like, guessing it cognates every four words. Um, but it appears to be kind of this fusion of, um, what is that really popular casual game where you... Diner Dash! It appears to be, like, this combination Diner Dash cooking mama deal. Uh, I seriously would not want to work for that guy in the picture. <laughs> He's kind of got that, like, Seinfeld soup Nazi expression. I'm sure that was entirely intense. <laughs> no tacos for you. Um, I'm not even going to try and do accents today. I, I will just fuck it up and do something crazy racist, which is bad. Um, but I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, these are... I, I don't know what the site is that gave kind of the top five games in Mexico. But uh, if, you, if anybody out there, internet, knows more about the game industry of Mexico right now, please let us know. Because, I, like, I know when Andre Passe was here, we learned a lot about the Brazilian game industry, right? And Brazil is kind of really heavy on developing their own kind of game stuff. But we don't, we don't actually talk about that a lot in the U.S., right? Like, the small game industries that work within, within countries that don't do a lot of exporting to other countries, right? Like, we're kind of... We only care if they start sending their stuff to us. Like Singapore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kinda. Kinda. Uh... <laughs> Is you know, was, like uh, I mean, that's uh, the Australian game industry is primarily like a branch of the. Uh, I mean, we we have companies like Sheed, that, but that's I'm not sure if that's Australian. Well, I think it, it kind of depends on what it, industry you're talking about. Like a lot of your mobile phone devices, our mobile phone software, plenty of it's going to be made all over the place. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So they're not telling the you where, where it's from. Exactly. The Australian games industry is like taking a dramatic change of direction since all of the studios other than Irrational right. or 2K Australia closed down. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's way more focused on independent development and mobile development. Right. And so in particular Halfbrick, uh, mm. really at the forefront of that, they made uh, Fruit Ninja and also uh, Jetpack fishing. Joyride, yeah. but, which both of which have done really well. Uh, yeah, but it's kind of unfortunate, right? Like. Just because an industry is making games in another country and those games aren't coming here doesn't mean that those games, like, aren't important slash don't exist. <laughs> That's sort of... But we're very we're very imperialistic about it here in the United States. Well, I mean, so much of it is just driven by where the centers of publishing are. So, yeah. like, Europe is well represented with a good number of publishers that have international reach, and so does the U.S. and Japan. 
but you know, I, well, guess, I mean, like Korea is a good example of one that has very locally targeted partnerships. Yeah, but they've been pushing stuff into the U.S. market too. Yeah. Uh, SE Soft, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I do think the digital distribution is good for that, though, right? Like, where as long as you have a localizing team that can that can do multiple languages, mm -hmm. if you're not actually shipping a physical medium, then it becomes a lot easier to get distribution of your game all over. Like, as we... All right, so what is the name of this game? I need to find out if uh, it's... self Actor. I wonder if they have a demo. I probably should have found that out before, you know, now. Oh, I'm pretty sure they did. They all have a gameplay video, right? Yeah. Also, oh, PlayStation Store. <laughs> I feel like the you Brooklyn gotta, grandmother. Sorry. Look at you. <laughs> Loading. You're also not going to be able to download it. <laughs> oh, hell no. I'm not even going to try. But I'm hoping that there's like a click here for screenshots so that we can... Or we can read their description of the game. Which would be cool. I hate you, PlayStation Store. Yeah, pretty much any console. Not, not best foot forward. Although I do find of kind, kind of find this. Uh, yeah. There you go. Oh, there it is. Self actor psychokinetic wars. That's a great title. Five bucks, nice. And a free demo. Read more. Let's see. It's a fast-paced first-person multiplayer shooter. Choose your side in the battle of technology versus humanity. Manipulate your environment and kill your enemies with a choice of gunfire and or telekinetic superpowers. Use your mind to rip objects from the environment and smash them in any direction. Oh, that actually sounds really cool. Um, let's watch their trailer. Maybe we can watch their trailer. Who's got the TV remote, though? Because I think that volume is, like, really quiet. Uh, it was my earlier. What's Hello. up, everybody? Hey, Jason Cross. How's it going? Oh, no, the 10% of the brain thing. Yeah. Oh, God. Get over it, MIT. Oh, it's behind the keyboard. Get over what? <laughs> they brought out the only use 10% of your brain to explain psychic powers trope, and these two started grooming. Uh, Psychokinetic powers? What is this? What's happening? Dude! This is, uh, this was developed in Mexico? Is that, yeah. Is that, yeah. Developed in Mexico. Oh. Uh, is everyone an Android? Uh... Like half or half a human? Yeah. Okay. Space Marine. Mm. <laughs> How can you even tell anymore? Yeah. Somewhere Donna Haraway is laughing at us. Everyone is cyborgs. Everyone! That's not exactly what I meant, but okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not entirely what I meant. But that's cool. Cyborgs are cool. Lasers are cool. Um, actually, kind of the neat thing about, about that list of top five games, right, is that you had, like, you've got this, which seems like a very traditional first-person shooter made for an American audience, right? Mm -hmm. You've got a couple of mobile games, one of which was just adorable turtles and one of which was tacos right you've got kind of like the self-referential mariachi mariachi game but then you've got uh lucha libre slash triple a the game i can cannot stop calling it that um that's just the name of the league right that, that, that yes the it's i'm not even trying to pronounce it because i was not built to pronounce spanish it just comes out sounding weird and hebrew -y actually coming from me like, I get lots of <laughs> in it, and, like, and that's not Spanish, doesn't have that sound, so, um, no, but it was, like, it, that was very, like, uh, it was more of a mass market internally for Mexico that then they tried to push out to, uh, to other markets. So it's an interesting list, you know, there's a lot of diversity in that list. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show, which I think I maybe need to, no, let's just start with Street Fighter. Um, so, how many people are familiar with Saeed's concept of Orientalism? The idea that the media creates... Does somebody want to give a summary? So I don't have to... Nope, I'm going to have to do it, aren't I? <laughs> right, so the... I am really boiling down an entire book to, like, two sentences. So please don't... Tradition. Yeah, please don't write in talking about how much I don't understand Saeed because I'm boiling an entire book down to, like, two sentences, yeah, okay? Fighting them. Uh, but the, uh, the gist, kind of the basic idea, is that... Um, 
hegemonic culture and media culture create kind of fantastical to be consumed images of other cultures that boil them down to a very specific set of stereotypes, right? He and his book Orientalism was Orientalism was very much about kind of the Orient, which itself is a construction, right? Like this mystical place full of dragon ladies and lion dancing parade people and opium obsessed dragon whatever. I don't know, whatever. Like the like all of those stereotypes and crazy images you know, are obviously damaging because they turn the diversity of that entire culture down into one or two emblematic things. Um, Jack Shaheen has written about it with um, Muslims and Arab cultures, specifically uh, if you've ever heard of his book slash documentary Arab Land, uh, which talks about Hollywood's in particular construction of Arabs. Um, the documentary is really good, especially for a scene by scene breakdown he does of True Lies, if you've ever seen that movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Just the one so with, with one the our most right? sophisticated cultural product. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, not not only is it a cheesy action film with Arnold Schwarzenegger in it, but they're also like, Islam's hilarious. So you know, uh, if you ever really want <laughs> really want to get your righteous indignation up, watch Jack Sheen's documentary Air Blame. It's good stuff. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about how both Lucha Libre and Dia de los Muertos, which are kind of those two cultural influences that went into Guacamele, um, show up in other video games. So right now we're looking at Street Fighter IV. Uh, does anybody want to give a... I don't... But we want... Well, uh, so I want tournament to show... Of champions? Oh, is that the Tournament of World Champions? I can never remember. Oh, well, I mean, Street Fighter as a game is kind of... Orientalism, the fighting game, right? Like, and fighting games as a genre, if you look through them, are pretty much made up of characters primarily that take a single individual cultural stereotype and then turn it into a fighting style. Um, unless it's Japan, at which point you have all sorts of stuff. Uh, but, like, Americans are always, always boxers. Um, and dumb as a brick. Thai, Thai boxers. Yeah. yeah. You know, you've got lots of... Anyone from Thailand is probably a kickboxer. Anyone from France is probably um, a fencer. Anyone from... Uh, Brazil? Brazil, Brazil is yeah. a capoeira. Yeah. You know, that's the only one that I kind of don't care about because it's, you know, cap Brazil's maybe part of the home. If not the home of capoeira, then at least a place where it is burgeoned into a huge cultural phenomenon, right? But I wanted to show... Um, I'm turning off the time limit so that I can just talk about these characters for a second. Have they ever had a Korean yeah, Uh like, King of Fighters has lots of Koreans. I mean, in the, sorry, yeah, I, I mean specifically in the Street Fighter series. In Street Fighter series? I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, but I want to talk about El Fuerte, who is a um, Lucha Libre wrestler, and can you pick, oh, where is he, down one, right, right, right. That one. T-Hawk, oh, who's uh, a Mexican Native American. What? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And the size of a bus. Um, and also, we're going to go to the only stage in the stages that is in South America. Just to give a vision of what they think South America is like, too. And I'm not trying to call out the Street Fighter games as being particularly racist, although they kind of are. But, um... Just, no just to kind of else. no more than no more than anyone else. <laughs> uh, it's typical. Wait, wait, is that a prank man? Yes. Yes. So here's the deal. El Fuerte is not just a luchador. He is, which if you don't know anything about lucha libre, is a a lucha libre fighter is a luchador, right? Um, he's also a chef. Don't don't start with the fighting don't just worry. yet. Don't worry. I'm back. But uh, yeah. So to give you an example. <laughs> Um, El Fuerte's moves are all named after food. Uh, mm -hmm. Habanero Dash, get it? Tostada Press, Fajitas Buster. I only, I'm trying to mimic that actor's <laughs> voice, which you'll hear. Um, I don't know what Calamari is doing there, because Calamari is actually Italian, isn't it? Yeah. It's gonna be the best. God damn it, world, Capcom, so. breaking my immersion. So, all but. For the world. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the guacamole yeah, anyhow. leg throw. <laughs> guacamole. Yeah, you know, that's a useful adjective there because now I have some sense for what that leg throw might be like. 
They might involve avocados. <laughs> yeah, Sky Store. I actually like Store Princess if I'm remembering them right. Like they're kind of a cool dessert. It's like oh, a, yeah, they're fluffy. Yes, I, I, they're you know, but that <laughs> chili mexicano, right? Like it's just deliciously beaten. Yeah. But none so, of them are alcohol based. Now I'm hungry. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's interesting, right? Like he's this weird, and of course the shtick is that he's a terrible chef. Because he's constantly trying to do fusion cuisine. Like in one of his endings, he mixes um, mole and borscht after mm. fighting Zangief. Uh, and the result knocks out three people after they've eaten it. Right? Uh, so that's El Fuerte. T Hawk is Mexican, but he's much more of a kind of uh, Native American stereotype, I think. Right? Like he's got the look feathers, he's got the fringe jacket. The face, kind of the war paint, right? Um, but he, I think we can see his list, right? He is a he is a wrestler, and so um, more of just like a power wrestler, just like a grab him by the face and slam him into the ground wrestler. Um, but yeah, Mexican typhoon tomahawk buster because Native Americans isn't that hilarious? I love animal things. Yes, yeah. you know condors. Typhoons, Mexican throw. What does that even neck mean? Neck hanging tree. Yeah, he kind of grabs him by the neck and goes. And you see, drops that him. actually sounds reasonable for a fighting move. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what's a neck, neck hanging tree? I hang you by the neck from a tree. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah. what does Mexican throw yeah. mean? Yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> like, can you? All right, so it's, Mexican throws you. Yeah, give us a Mexican throw. It's away and then light and I think it's for you it will be these two together. Nope. Uh. Okay. Let's try it again. Fig. You need to think. Second throw set. It's on. Light is square and light is X. All right. So away from me and these two buttons. These buttons. Yeah. Alright. Mm -hmm. That's a throw. That's a Mexican yeah. throw. Oh, that's... that's so nice. that's a Mexican throw. It's very Mexican. Huh. Yeah. That's a fajitas buster. <laughs> sure. Because... Yep. Yeah. What, that's what it is. What so, it is. I'm gonna let these two duke it out. Todd, you may not know the answer to this at all, but, I mean, so there's a media tradition, right, through the combat show, where, uh, from, like, Lost Patrol to Baton, where, uh, America tries to make sense of itself through telling stories that have component ethnic people, um, and... Everything comes out okay because we're diverse and together. Even though people die one at a time, and shh, wouldn't you know it? Like yeah. the less white you are, the faster <laughs> you die. Faster you die. Right, uh, and, that, and then that sort of makes its way into horror films, and ultimately, potentially, something like this, if there's continuity, right? Because then you're, you know, I think, I think what's happening here is. A combination of stylization and easy ID. Oh, but Mexican throw. Right? <laughs> like, you have to you have to make the characters huge and stylized and kind of tropey because you there's no real story meat to this. Right. So if you want them to understand the character and kind of the character's thematic material all in one go, you just have to paint it in huge brush strokes, right? Yeah, see, don't lament over your loss. The spirits will heal and rejuvenate you. Because Even you are oh, a ripoff of an egg. Yeah, I know, exactly, right? <laughs> the copyright lawyers will not be as generous. There's, there's another tradition, which is the uh, you know the the kung fu film, which which where it's all a series of one and one one and one fight of various mid bosses mm -hmm. and then the final boss. Oh of yeah. Various styles. Which is how these games are structured in the first place. Right. And, 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 and it does sound I think the cross pollination happens with like Chuck Norris era films. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, 70s were the cultural disaster pot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and even Bruce Lee. 
Right. Right, yeah. Had some very westernized movies in his repertoire. <laughs> Ow. That's the Guacamole Electro, by the way. <laughs> uh, you didn't even have to say that out loud. It totally made sense to me. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Was looking at. That was the tor that was the propeller tortilla. Because the move. Which is different from the fajitas buster. I don't know how to throw my that. But you'll notice, like, even as two wrestler-type characters, Fuerte is kind of, he's very emblematic of Lucha Libre. Like, he's hes very mobile, very acrobatic, very quick. Like, not kind of the lumbering body slammer type that you're used to. No, he's, uh, he's and more chubby, like. Yeah, well, I mean, and Lucha Libre as a sport and entertainment is... Uh, very much about showmanship. Did I really just miss that? God damn I'm it. just jumping around, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wanted to see. I wanted to see a win quote from Forte. Plus, I wanted to see him do I'm this. Still win. Deal. He's full of memories, amigo. He says something in Spanish, so we know he's Mexican. All right. So I wanted to move on from. <laughs> he refers to volcanoes. Yes, and those Mexican. <laughs> Mexico is where the only place where both volcanoes and Spanish come together. <laughs> Nowhere else. Um, so that was kind of a look at Lucha Libre. Man, I really do wish we had a copy of that Lucha Libre game. Um, but then there's Dia de los Muertos, which I spent like a half an hour to an hour getting us to this point in Little Big Planet today, people. So you should be thankful. Um, Thank you, Todd. <laughs> the sacrifices I make playing video games. I slaved over a hot PS3 all day. Uh, <laughs> Actually, yeah. I, I Do you want to know what a man looks like? <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? The sacrifices. We actually will play Guacamelee at some point. By the way, internet, like, don't leave. We're getting there. Yet, we're working on it. Um, but I wanted to show how many people here have actually played Little Big Planet. So, have any of you gotten to the uh, the bride section of the oh, first no. game? No. Yeah. Uh, so it's a whole like three. We're not going to go through all three because that would take like an hour. But um, it's a whole series of levels that if you if you've never played Little Big Planet. The single player portion of the God, how long is this gonna take? The single player portion of the first game was basically Media Molecule going, We kinda need something for you to do other than build levels. So we're going to do this. And then they made a single player that was basically you travel around the world. Can I Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, hello. Uh, but as you can see... No. Um, stop! Oh my god. Stop. Stop. Oh my god. Are you sure you want to see read that again? Wait. Oh, I don't want it to tell me more. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Owen. Oh. All right, so as as you can see, like they made this little, you know, paper craft. Really, Stephen Fry? I'm talking, bro. Need it. Thank you. Um, so they basically made a little world, right? So this, and each little world is supposed to be kind of an example or to draw on a particular culture. Right, um, and this level, which takes place, I think, in Argentina, is about Dia de los Muertos, and the kind of the mini story is that this this woman was going to marry Don Lu, I think is the name of her prospective husband, and then he gets kidnapped, and there's I I should have checked this before today, but I think there is kind of like a bride and groom motif in the story behind Dia de los Muertos. Uh, we should maybe Wikipedia that. But, um, in any event, I just wanted to show you this level, uh, called The Wedding Reception. What have you done, game? 
uh, called the wedding reception. So, yeah. So we want to go for it, Sean. Send me. Do it. No, play on our own. Do not play online, or we will be here all day. Oh, hey, it remembers oh, my progress. Right That's around. weird. Okay. Alright, so... The groom has gone missing. Um, skeletons are a very important emblem in Dia de los Muertos. Uh, that word calavera means skeleton. But you know, some Spanish. Uh... I wish you could hear the little <laughs> noises he's making. Also, oh, putting things on top of things and uh, knocking them over is also important. Yes. <laughs> As is being made of canvas. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> difficult holiday to celebrate. Mm, not what I wanted. Not what I wanted either. You have to wait until he gets over there. You don't have that trigger. Right. If you did, it would be in the triggers section. Right. I'm out. Come with me on. Oh, and you're terrible at this, bro. I mean, not to be that guy, but. <laughs> yeah, collecting stuff isn't necessarily a Tales Muertos tradition, but it is a Little Big Planet tradition. Right, let's, let's try this again. But you can definitely see like all of the uh, like a lot of the the skeleton um, imagery is definitely the Leo Sporto stuff. Jump. Also, this song in the background is called Volver and Comenzar by a group called Sino Takaba, and you can get it on the iTunes store. But they actually did that with a lot of Little Big Planet levels. They picked kind of like world music to go with the levels. Electric floor, very important to you, oh, okay. tradition. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how much platforming is involved in Mexican holidays, you guys. Like, well, a lot. They're very good platformers as a people. The electric what, floor is a good way to get more so. <laughs> True. Oh. Well, and Dia de los Muertos is about kind of like a time when the spirit okay. world yeah. and, the, and the real world mingle, right? Which is why... But the interesting thing about it as a festival, and I'm like trying to remember what I know about this, is that like it's about honoring the dead, but it's actually yeah. kind of a... It's kind of a happy, fun, celebratory time. Like it's, it's not a, living. it's not That's a bad. grieving time. This is bad. bad if place. you, yeah, if you yeah, jump like... right when you hit the drum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Owen, it's on you. When you get reach the peak. Yeah, it's when peak. you reach the peak, then you jump, and you should get more height. You know, springs. Think about the, uh, the, uh, the musical contraption ah. in, uh, Kendall. Aww. That's good. I think there's another example. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should actually move to Guacamole at some point. But, um... Do it. Yeah, so there's actually... <laughs> uh, the best part is that the end... The end of this chain of levels um, involves you being chased by a giant chicken... That is like Godzilla size, and basically all you do is run from the giant chicken, and you'll see why I think the giant chicken is important once we actually get to Quackamelee. So, why are you asking? <laughs> They're afraid of you, Internet. They fear your censure. 
Any day now, PS3. Thank you. So I don't actually know how much... Oh, I did want to talk about one thing. Um, so there's... Uh, here's the deal. Guacamole... Guacamole. Guacamole is made from avocados. Guacamole, on the other hand... It's hard not to do that. I dare you. I, I bet you can't stop yourself from doing it. Um, kind of combines uh, these references to Dia de los Muertos and to Lucha Libre with kind of some digs at Mexican culture and also some real digs at, at um, internet culture. Like, uh, for example, there's a lot of... A lot of... Um, references uh to various things that you'll see hopefully but um i mentioned that on twitter while speaking with uh patricia hernandez who writes for kotaku and nightmare mode and we were both like yeah i don't know how i feel about all these references in the art director for this game that popped up on twitter he was like there's not that many um so i thought that was funny but the, if you could the internet ones or the mexico ones the internet ones i see and slash 8-bit video game ones. Uh, but can, no, is there a Kotaku article somewhere in this oh, list yes. of tabs? That's not it. Um, to left. Yeah. So, uh, if you haven't seen this article on Kotaku, uh, just Google that headline and you'll find it. Uh, it was written by Jorge Albor, who uh, is a games writer who works out in California. And... Um, He's of Mexican descent, and he played through this game, and then kind of afterwards went, I feel like I'm supposed to be offended, but I'm kind of ambivalent about how offended I am, right? Um, and I, that was kind of how I felt playing it, too. I can tell you, he, he and I were talking on Twitter right after he posted the blog post version of this. Um, this is actually a repost on Kodaku's part. But he was like, I had a lot of friends ask me, you know... So what do you think about guacamole? Gu See? God damn it. I just did it again. Cool. Right. Guacamole um, is tasty. Guacamole is delicious. Um, he had a lot of friends ask him, you know, what he thought about it. And I was just like, I think you're getting questions from people who know that the game is towing the line and they kind of want your permission as a Mexican-American to like it. Um, the, I, know, I say that because I kind of had that thought, right? Like, I was asking the internet... Dude, I'm kind of feeling like this is... I don't know how I feel about this, bro. And it, it is interesting, I think, especially if you're coming from a position of privilege, like if you're white and straight and cisgendered, that you can play stuff that plays around with those representations and kind of... You, you do kind of want to seek out somebody who doesn't have your privilege and go, Hey, is it okay if I like this? Um, I'm not saying you should do that, but I am saying I think that's a that's a natural urge. Um, when you know something is kind of... Eh, right? And you start to feel like, I'm not feeling great about this. Um, so definitely read For His Seasons. It's very enlightening. He doesn't he doesn't come to, to a you should be deeply offended or you should not be deeply offended conclusion. But in the process of getting to that kind of middle ground space, he does a really good breakdown of some of the game's stuff. Uh, but other than that, I just want to let people dive in. I would go new game. Are you sure? Yes, it doesn't matter. I was only playing to make sure it worked. So, it's not two players at first. So relax. <laughs> so you start as uh, Juan Aguacate. Uh, that means avocado, and I know that because there's an aguacate cafe near Porter Square, <laughs> and their 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 sign is a giant mission. avocado. Actually, yeah. um, is that any good? Actually, um, is that any good? I've never been there. I've only seen its front sod. That was Frey I I I. This is the Casa de Juan. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, we're not <laughs> talking... It out loud, I played that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, whatever, sure. <laughs> yeah, you look at the name and you're like, oh, cutesy video game name, and then you say it out loud and you're like, ay, 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 and it's like, oh. Yeah. Well, that in my head I said fryer, not fry. Fry. Fry, ay, 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 ay
So this is Plen Lucho, which is a pun in and of itself, right? Like Pueblo as a word for town or building, and Lucho is so it's it's the Luchador. Luch, get it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Lucho. Yeah. All right, go go back All for right. just a sec. So even in other languages, puns are yeah. So dudes. stop right, right there. Does this mushroom look familiar? Uh, take away, that, take away the mustache. Oh, that mushroom, sure. Yeah. So it's begun. I challenge you, internet and people here in the room, to just keep a running catalog of these and point them out when you see them. Because I want to have ammunition if that guy comes back on my Twitter feed. Wine barrels. Triforce, right? Whoa. Triforce is the They're just barrel, bro. Like, those are the lowest totem pole of breakable objects in video games. I don't. I just one step above pretty. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, barrels are stuff that have, like. Yeah, I don't know. Well, what about Final Fight? Like, barrels are full of turkey and meat and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. no, that's, that's good stuff in barrels. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I also find it fascinating that they keep swapping between English and Spanish in this dialogue. Mm -hmm. Like, fry ay 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 oh, God, I can't even say it out loud anymore. Like, he has a whole, a whole conversation in English with Juan, right? She walks in the room and then he goes, Hablando del, del Rey de Roma. And I'm just like, speaking of the King of Rome? Wait, why did you say that? Does he have a black eye or is that just his... No, I think he's got a one eye closed. His character design? Yeah. Yeah, he's just generally composed. Okay. Well, I mean, this is a very traditional kind of, like, old Mexican film image, right? At least coming from the U.S. point of view, where it's got, like, the the slightly drunken fat friar who's wearing clothes from, like, I mean, 1640, robe, right? Yeah. Like, just a robe and a belt. And then something explodes. Yeah, hey, spoilers for Guacamelee Internet. Sorry! <laughs> but I was just on that poor story again. So now you've got the skeleton in this kind of like Three Amigos slash Mariachi Band garb. What in the shit? <laughs> he's, he's got flame for a face. See? Flame face. <laughs> so, you know, you've got like the wrestling, uh, well, that was the shortest match ever. <laughs> So what was the barrels? <laughs> 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 you did, you did. Maybe she'll punch more barrels. That's like the video game rules. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Go back to barrels, buddy. At least you might feel basic and competent. Well, that was satisfying, dude. Left it up to the So, you know, being who I am, the first Mexican wrestler that I ever encountered was Starman from Nintendo's uh, <laughs> pro, pro, pro wrestling, wrestling from the NES. Yeah. Yeah. He was not a luchador. He was just a dude with a star mask on. Well, the mask is like 
a big deal in Lucha Libre. Like it's but a, it's not a very luchador. Clearly, we have a Guardian of the Mask. No, it looks it's a not. lot more like you Batman can't really see did. through it because there's no eye holes, for right, example. Exactly. So this is Tostada because, of course, it is the Guardian of the Mask. Oh yeah. So if you don't know anything about Lucha Libre, like the the mask and the concealing of your identity is a very big thing, and have being unmasked. By arrival is a like disastrous. What is even going on? Digging the tattoo. All right, now you can do two players. I think. We're in. Maybe. Who's in the barrel talking to you? There might be someone hiding in the barrel. Oh. I think he's gotta stop talking. To you. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. In this game, they have smart barrels. All right, come on. Yeah. I can play to start it. You must now pop the bubble controlled by your allies so that you can join you. Here comes a new challenge. I play the. You're in the bubble. I'm in the bubble. Pop it. No, run away from it some more. So, uh, I've never seen Tostada in play before because I don't. We're not playing co-op at home. So this should be pretty cool. Unless you pray in the rooms in the church. We're in the church. Wait, what exactly is this button doing? Have they kind of... Is it a grab or is it a... When triangle shows up over yeah. them, you can grab them. If the triangle's not over them, it doesn't do anything. Message here is that no matter where you fight evil, it should drop money. <laughs> Rolling to the end of its spike attack. Spike attack. L2 and. I think I'm completely. Oh, L2. Yeah, it's one of those. It's up to you, man. Like three times in a row. Uh-oh. You just learned how! Oh my god, Owen! I didn't realize that that was actually an ability that I was doing. I didn't understand the mechanics of the game at all, what am I doing? Thanks, man! <laughs> Genre savvy, folks. Don't underestimate it. The water closet. I like the music. Sorry. Request. <laughs> I saw which, how you worked on those evil skeletons. <laughs> Could you defeat you my chickens? chickens? Okay, no, wait, 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 wait. So drop down to your lower left for a sec. Alright. Oh, Jesus. Nope. Went too far. See the sign? The versus sign? Is that Mega Man versus. That was Skyhawk. Yeah, that's. that's yep, that's the. Yeah, it's Majora's Mask. Yeah. No worries. How do you use the melee? So, how do we get to the spell of the thingy? I don't know the force is that. Oh. Let's do it. Let's do it. you people. Double jump. What is this? Have you never played a Metroidvania before? You yeah. never start with the double jump. <laughs> So, all right, hold on. Go back for a sec. So you can see this is kind of like the Dia de los Muertos offerings slash decoration deal, right? Like the big thing of marigolds, um, graves, decorated, stuff like that. And that 
table off to the right is both a save point, but it's also like kind of the offering table that would be full of food and stuff, and it's the shop. So, I thought that was pretty funny. And you decorated a skull right there at the, on, on the table and in the middle. Although you said it's really Oh, the skull's the vendor. Uh, He's got the goods. Is that why it's blinking on the right right now? No, that's the saving to disc icon. Okay. <laughs> Can you throw those at each other? All right, now. Good. Look, like, that's going to get grim real fast. Ha! Ha ha! This might have a real grim fan Oh, God. Oh, you're fired. So the combat is, like, pretty simple. Like, you have a three-hit combo, and then you can throw. There's special throws you can learn. And for you who've never played a Metroidvania and or are wondering what the hell I mean when I say the word Metroidvania, like, it pretty much describes a 2D platformer where you steadily gain new abilities, and then those abilities unlock parts of the map. Like and there's a lot of... Yeah, yeah, like Metroid and or Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It's a portmanteau. Check that word on Wikipedia. Um, Which is a combination of the words port and manteau. What happened? Is chickens? They skipped the chickens. Chickens, chickens skip wrong. I don't know why. Maybe they hate chickens. So does this guy have a last one? Or is he just no, a he's an actual jaguar. This is the guy they made reference to earlier, right? Yeah. Jaguar Javier. Yeah. Whoa. 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 Me. And now you, you fall. Lose. <laughs> What's that? Jesus. I don't want to spoil the surprise on the little glory platforms. We'll see if we get that far. Not there. If you go up with, with close, uh, to the same point with Osada, does it not say man bro? Or does it still call you man bro? I do not know. We should check that out next time we get to the save point. I get the feeling that being able to play as Tostado is kind of an afterthought. Whoa, 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 whoa. The chest. Jesus Christ. You can't get up there. See? Sure. Sorry, I'm saving you time. I'm just impressed that they <laughs> decided to... Well... It was really hard to work out what the heck... So, Tostado needs to talk to it, instead of... Yep, still Yeah, it bro. still says man bro. Okay. Despite man bro. Now... Bro? Uh, mm. Gotta be. Nope. You just have to be a better jumper. <laughs> yeah, this thing could be going very well. If you touch the table, it'll show your health, though. Yeah. There's save points. Uh, save points restore your health. That's a thing. Oh. Okay. So, we can go this way yet? No, you can. You have to. You just have to be better jumpers. Like, I'm not trying to be that guy. <laughs> oh, well. See, there's a check. Oh, wow. Oh, geez. Okay. Giant chicken, like <laughs> you Thanks for putting that on this side. So you can also do it in the air. Slicing, guys, even though it's making the slicing yeah. sound, it's actually not hurting you. Yes, uh, exactly. So much of this kind of looks like it's also trying to steal the Super Brothers aesthetic. A little bit, like, like I kind of. It has a very, like, paper crafty sort of look to me. It's like a flash game. It's like, it's like, yeah. The key catch really really nice to the With all the video game references. Well, just like the yeah. brothers are so growing. Like, yeah, it's got this weird. Have you worked out what the bubble is yet? Yeah, Have you noticed that the red skeletons make kind of like the. Oh, no, they don't. I thought they did. Never mind. Signal withdrawn. I'm surprised at the lack of like traffic 
given the 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 what that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's some graphic. Everything graphic kind of well, this is a lot well, you'll, you'll you, get that later. you get more <laughs> pinata, by the way. Uh, you get more striking stuff than you get grappling like stuff. Now, what do I do for this? Right 2? L2? Uh, L2, yeah. L2. It's L2. Oh, I'm just run through the next stage. Save the thing. Probably sold. Oh, you missed the next one. Yeah, if you didn't, if you didn't notice that. Oh, yeah. Because. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so something is there's something after you after you go to the right more and do that. So don't break it. Yeah. Oh. Right. Uh, for people who've never seen one of those before, it was more or less a Chozo statue from Metroid, where Pythamus got most of her power ups. Now this goat is talking. His Chozo statue, get it? Like Chivo. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay. Is that because he's like giving achievements? Is he a Chivo? Uh, I actually don't know. Uh, this is Forest of Chivo, though, so. It's a saggy drawer. It's a light cloth. Uh, later power-up screens after that one play uh, Electric Garage on the background. Oh. On the record. <laughs> so, this is kind of Metroidvania in action. There was a red block, you got a new ability, new ability opens red block. It's actually one thing I like about the game is the, all your... All your moves that open up with different ways to maneuver through the space are all still fighting moves. Yes. The same move but the same plan. Right, because you can do the other you can do the other the combo. Yeah. Eventually you'll get the abilities to break that blue block later. Um, well the move the move ends up being called the dashing derp derp. <laughs> which I went on Twitter and was like, I think we have to see other people, Guacamelee. Like, I don't know how I feel about that. And uh, again, the art director of the game popped up and said, Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah. That. Oh, yeah. 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 That took me forever to figure that out. That one right there. Uh, the, like, the fact that you can, do, you can chain the. Yeah, doing that and then doing But then you gotta do the uppercut yeah. to land on the yeah, thing. Yeah. I mean, just so messed up, but yeah. Now, see how you're red? You can't do it again until your stamina, that yellow block, refills. I wanted to, be, <laughs> to warn you all about that oh, one. Okay. You can also only do it once per jump. Oh, god damn it. Put up to me. Do you have lives? What was that? You have to pop this bubble. Buddy, flip this way! Just... Or that. I didn't realize that was a sentient bubble. <laughs> oh, right, I see. There's a roof above us. Classic <laughs> Ah! God! Why fight? Uh... Box. I thought I was the other one. Always. Yeah. Always. Classic two, two P's. I'm yeah. glad cooperation is merely helpful and not necessary. Yeah. Yeah, Luigi would be bald. Well, we For now. Mm. Not that Owen and I are in game mode. I also like that Tostada's rooster uppercut is actually a kick. 
Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, wow, that's awfully suspicious. Is that a big thing? <laughs> I don't think so. It's a little bit more like the, uh, the flower that kind of has in You can also attack him in air. What what what's the currency sign for the people? I don't actually know, but I don't think they use it for the money that we get. They definitely use the dollar sign. There you go, Owen. We're learning. Pinata. Oh, well, then there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I understand. So that bone can just kill you dead. You can roll through it with L2. That's what L2 is for. Is to roll through things that will hurt you. One Yeah. Oh. Poor Tostada is... Tostada. <laughs> oh my god, nobody got that joke! What'd you say? I got it. Tostada was... Tostada? She was dead. So she was, I, I uh, heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone get out. <laughs> oh. I really, I really want you to get to the next town because, like, oh yeah, but that's the metroidvania. You don't need to fight. Yeah, you really shouldn't. Well, that's not always true. Like, fighting is usually to your benefit in this game. Yeah. Well, you could grind and gather a whole bunch of money. But like the the Serape covered skeleton is not the only enemy in the game. It just tend to be all you all you face in the beginning. Yeah. Two hundred four hits. Uh, don't let the head on. What does that mean? I don't know. Fall. Okay, cool. Fall. Carol is dog has two R's though. Oh, lucky dog. Maybe. No, Carol with one R is but. Yeah, pair it with one R is butt. Butt is in the preposition, not butt is in yeah. <laughs> butt. So now, this it's is the first time that they actually dark. explicitly tell you it's Dia de los Muertos, right? But I'm like, I figured you would have figured it out by now because of all the skeletons. But okay, so you need to look around this town because some of the best references are in this town. You can't go in that door. I'm going to save you some time. For example, there's Wario. The picture on the wall. Is that Pikachu? Viva Pinatas! Yeah. Get it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, and then, of course, there's an actual Pinata in there. Uh. Okay. 
okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey. No matter how much you beat them up, I have never been able to get them to attack you, which you would think is the reference they would go for. Yeah. But check out this poster. Oh, wow. Oh, realmente? Si, sí, really. <laughs> uh. There's a that T-shirt on the line is uh, an advertisement for one of Drinkbox's other games. Um, Desperate the kitchen is there. So now you have a quest to make the world's biggest enchilada. Sure. Head up on head, head up onto that, that platform. There's grumpy cat cat food. Gato <laughs> grignon. Uh, oh yeah. This is so, perhaps so the, the question really is like if this is like not a lot of internet references, what is a lot of internet references? <laughs> the internet is a lot. Just if it's not like we dump you just in 4chan on bit. Save any time, you can't go through there yet. But there's, yeah, there's the Migrusta Guavas. I cringe every time I see that one because I kind of hate the Migrusta face. Yeah. What is it even? Also, the eagle with the <laughs> snake is kind of <laughs> the, is the seal, national seal of Mexico, right? A large fighting chicken lives in the house nearby. I am the great combo chicken. Got <laughs> <laughs> various cheeses. But check out, like, check out these posters, right? Pasta Crashers. Do they look familiar? Mm -hmm. um, the tonight, the one and only Alinko. So you were right, whoever guessed that before. Yeah. Super Meat Boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> an old an old Mega Man reference. Does anybody yeah. remember energy tanks that refilled yeah. your health? Yeah. Yeah. So of course they have one, but it's got uh, the acute accent uh, right. over it because it's Spanish. <laughs> There's yeah, another poster the of, for one of their games. I think that's like the main problem I have with the game is, yeah, it's blah blah blah, funny because Spanish. <laughs> a little bit, like we missed, we missed an NPC uh, back in Pueblucho, where you can't go back to now, which is what I'm going to tell you, who says, the president's daughter is very smart, and I'm kind of doing this totally affected, completely racist accent to make this work. Uh, she's like, Presidente's daughter is not just beautiful, she's smart. She went to the University Dad in Santa Lucita. What did she study? Humanity, spelled with a J, right? Now, in Spanish, the J has an H pronunciation, right? But they're also simultaneously kind of riffing that crazy pigeon English Spanish accent yeah. that you hear, right? Like the Speedy Gonzalez team, you're, I don't know what you're going to do, right? Like that sort of way that no human being on Earth actually talks like. So we've missed a couple of the more egregious, like... But it's sad because there's, like, the, the amount of the Spanish language content is pretty... Like, if you know the language, there's a lot of inside jokes. Yeah! There's, like, a lot of opportunity there, but then when you just do the... Yeah, the bad English, it just kind of, like, undercuts it. Uh, yeah. Did you notice the, the Mario Brothers ref way in the back? Tag Team El Super Brothers? One guy in a red hat, one guy in a green hat. Mm -hmm. 
I think the conclusion I came to about the references, and if you listen to this week's Game Bar, I said it there too, like, the problem is not that they're not funny, it's that the Metroidvania as a genre involves a ton of backtracking, so that you're not seeing them once, you're seeing them like five, six, seven, eight, ten times, right? And by time ten, you're like, oh, come on! Yeah. That's the real problem, I think. This console is no joke. I have to admit, just seeing the tutorial makes me really not want to play. Like, you don't need to do that. Do do that? You don't need no, this. Okay. You really don't. Yeah. But we want to be elite. <laughs> well, being elite is hard, Jason. Uh. Uh. If you try to do things, try to do things too fast, then you'll end up failing. Oh, no, I see. Let me show you. No, 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 I get it. <laughs> no, let me show you, Owen. Okay. Ah, come back here. I love that the chicken just get mad and backs the ground. Like, you fail too often. Triangle, says the chicken. That's just a talk to him. Well, anyhow, internet, I think we can <laughs> probably stop streaming. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed the intro to Guacamole. Um, as divided as I am on its occasional representations of Mexican culture, and as divided as I am on the uh, references, which are only going to get worse from here on out, um, I do think it's worth your 11 bucks. I haven't quite beat it yet. Other stuff has been getting in the way, but just last night I got to the... I beat Jaguar Javier in a one-night-only engagement. I guess that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> on that one floating screen, right? So, Thank you for joining us. 